Today we're going to be looking at a script by the name of Flash.sh which is basically a little application to study flashcards within your terminal so you can do things like study for an exam, study for a test or just test your general knowledge. Now one thing I do want to say is I was asked to look at this by the developer. That doesn't mean I'm not going to be very critical of it because it does need a lot of work but if you just want a very basic flashcard application this is probably just going to do the job. So let's just go look at the GitHub page and see what the application actually is. Now, this is the first GitHub page we're going to look at. There's also another one that contains some Flash decks, but let's go and actually look at Flash.sh, which is also a really wasted opportunity for a name. Get rid of this sh, fla.sh, perfect name. I don't know what you're doing with this naming, but you can have that one for free. I'm pretty sure someone's probably also said it already anyway, but yeah, fix the name. Anyway, so this is what the application looks like. And you might notice some things you've seen before. So the interface it uses to actually select a flashcard document is FCF. So that is one of the dependencies. And for these previews on the side, it uses BAT. Now, I would like to be able to customize this. So say I want to use something like FCY or D menu. There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to do that. It's just hard coded in the actual script at this point. And same with the actual previews here. I should be able to use CAT or pistol or literally anything else I want to use. There's no reason why that has to be hard coded, but it's not too important. Just remember though, if you do want to use this application, you will need to actually have Fuzzy Finder or Bat, or just go and modify the script yourself because it is just a bash script, so it shouldn't be too difficult to fix. So all of the decks for this application are going to be stored in your .local slash share directory, which is a weird place to put them. I would prefer them to be in my .config directory, but I guess it also makes sense for them to be there. There's probably a sensible reason for them to be there. Someone's probably going to tell me why they shouldn't be in the .config folder. Someone's probably going to tell me why they should be. I would say I'd prefer them in .config, but anyway, this will work. So when you first run the application, it's going to try to generate this directory for you. It's going to ask you to do that. And I don't think the application will even work if you don't. So if you don't generate the directory, is there even any point of running the application? I haven't tried to run it without actually generating the directory. Now, it may work on Windows, it hasn't been tested, it may work on Mac. If you have FCF and BAT, I can't see any reason why it wouldn't because the only other thing it does is parses a CSV. So as long as you have bash and the dependencies, there's no reason why it shouldn't work. To install it, basically what you're going to have to do is put it in your .local slash bin directory or in your slash user slash bin directory or just in your path variable and that's the way that I've done it. So because it's just a bash script, there's no other installation process you have to do. All you're going to have to do is go copy the GitHub link and then git clone, you can spell clone correctly, paste that in and then just clone the directory. So give that a couple of seconds to download and all you're going to have to do then is go into that actual folder, so flash.sh, and then copy this file into wherever you want to actually put it. So I've already got it in my scripts directory, so I'm not going to bother with that. So if we see down here, flash, right here, I've already got it in here. This is just where I prefer to put it, just because it is a bash script, so it just makes sense for it to be in my scripts directory. You might prefer it to be in your bin folder. This is where I like it to be, though. So let's actually run the application and just see how it works. When I run it, I've only got one deck in my actual deck directory. So you can see some of the questions that are here, they're formatted in CSV. I'll go over how you actually make this file in just a moment. It's actually pretty straightforward, but we'll go over this first deck first. Now, as you can see, it gives you this thing up here where it says the number of cards you reviewed, your high score and your average review. Now the high score and average review don't really have much of a meaning and the reason for that is because there's no way to actually input an answer. So this high score is basically the number of cards you've gone through. So if you just go through a thousand cards and you don't answer any of them, it will still give you a high score of a thousand. So I would like to see a way to actually input an answer. That would be nice to see, but it's not super important. So the next thing we have in here is the actual category. So this tells you what subject it's for. You could put this anything you want. It could be anime, it could be, I don't know, basket weaving for all I care. That just basically tells you the subject it's for. And then obviously you have the question. So the answer to this one here would be a thousand. Now, one thing that does bother me is there's no indication of what key you have to press. It turns out you can press literally any key on your keyboard. So if we just press enter, that will show us the answer. Now, the next thing that I'm not too sure about is this, how difficult was the question? 
what does this actually indicate? So is this, so if you say a question is hard, is it going to show you the question more often? Is it going to be less often if you set it to easy? Does this have literally no meaning whatsoever? I'm not too sure on the how difficult this question was and what that actually does to the application. It would be nice to have a bit more of an indication of what that actually does. You could probably put that in like a help screen or something or a man page. It wouldn't be too difficult to write that out. What did Abraham Lincoln typically keep in his hat? Normally I wouldn't know the answer to this, but the answer is mail. So let's go to the next one. The blank blank project mapped all of the man's genes. I I have literally no idea. Hu of course it is. Human Genome Project. Okay, let's go to the next one. What is the distance between the Earth and Sol called? Uh, a astronomical unit, I think the answer was. In case you were curious, I don't believe there are any options for this application right now. So there's nothing like a help menu. I, at least I haven't been able to find one. So flash dash H doesn't work and flash dash dash help also doesn't bring up a help menu so I'm going to assume there are probably no options at this point actually let's let's just check the actual script see if we can find anything on it let's go down to help no there doesn't seem to be any sort of help menu in this script whatsoever that wouldn't be too difficult to add but yeah it's it's a little bit annoying that, that isn't there so fix that so you can at least add a description of the application just as a bare minimum thing and also explain what those difficulties are supposed to do and also explain the fact that literally any key will work to go through the application and then it seems to be quitting it is done with Q. But once again, that was kind of something I had to work out by guessing. There wasn't really any indication of that in the actual application itself. So I did mention you have this other GitHub page as well. So this is basically a GitHub page for a bunch of pre-made decks. Now the problem with this, and I'm not sure why you asked me to look at this application right now, is you haven't actually put any decks on here. So you show a bunch of them in here, but it seems like he forgot to actually push them up to the repo. So if we go into the chemistry directory, there's nothing in here, but even though in the example it shows some chemistry examples, I'm gonna assume these were probably just test files that didn't actually have anything in them. So at this point, you're gonna to have to make all of your own decks. But when you can actually use this GitHub page, basically the way you're gonna get the decks from here is go to the actual start of it, clone the repo. So we go back to our terminal, paste that link in, give that a second to download. And when that's done, let's go have a look in that directory. Flash dash decks. You'll have this decks folder in here. And basically all you're gonna to have to do with this one is copy this and then put it into your .local directory in the share folder in the uh, flash folder. And as you can see, I've already copied this in and I was looking through all of this before and there doesn't seem to be a single deck in here. So right now that repo is kind of useless, but I guess if more people decided to add stuff to it or if he just adds stuff to it to himself, then you have a bunch of these pre-made decks that you can actually test stuff with. But we get that pre-made deck already, so let's have a look at how we'd actually go and modify it. So as we can see, it's not too difficult in here. So we've got our first point in here, which is the subject, then you've got the question, then you've got the answer, and then you've got the actual rating. And the rating, or the score I think it's called, the score is basically how often it shows up. So the fourth field is the score, so the score determines how often cards are shown to you. A good idea is to start all your cards out at zero so they're served equally to you. As you study and review and mark more familiar cards as, as mild or easy, more points will be added. The lower point cards are sorted. Oh! Oh, is that what that does? So if you press, say, hard, it's going to change the actual level within this file. Okay, that makes sense. So put that somewhere like in a help menu or somewhere that someone's actually going to notice it because I didn't even realize this before. So when you rate card... So when you rate a question, it seems to go and actually modify this file directly. So say we had this question here set to being difficulty zero, and we said that this was a really difficult question. So what is the square root of four? Let's say that we don't understand what the square root of four is, and we say it's a really hard question. So if you were to rate this question as hard, it would actually modify the number in here to make sure that it shows up more often. That makes sense. So let's say we wanted to add a new question, like say, we want to add a math question. So uh, convert this 
binary to decimal and we want to convert 0, 0, so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Convert this to decimal. The answer to that is 1 and let's give it a rating of, I don't know, 0. Now if we just remove the rest of these questions in here, just so it's the only question that's going to pop up. Let's quit out of that and go back to here, bring up the application, run this deck, and now you can see the question here. So convert this binary to decimal, and the answer to this is obviously going to be 1, because this this column here is worth 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and obviously the answer to this, if you convert it to decimal, is going to be 1. This was obviously a really easy question, so let's rate that as really easy, and let's see if that's actually modified the uh, the file. So yeah, it seems to have raised the actual rating number in here when we did that. So let's do that a couple more times. Let's say we want to set it to five a bunch of times. And let's go have a look at that deck again. Now the rating for it is set to 10. So it seems like the higher the number is, the less often it's going to show up. So if you have a question like that joke question that was in there, best operating system, Arch, because by the way, I run Arch, and it has a rating of 999. So I think... 999 is just going to mean the question either never shows up or it really rarely shows up. I don't know if this is just like an edge case number or if it's actually a number that's valid within the application. Once again, something else that should be mentioned in the documentation just so people have an understanding of what they're doing when they're actually setting these numbers. Programs like this, the reason that I like reviewing random GitHub projects, because you'll come across stuff that is just really weird, but you think, hey, someone's got a use for it, and maybe I might use this when I study for my exams. I'm not really sure. I'm not much of a flashcard person, but maybe I'll try them out. I, I don't know. Could be something that I'll do. So I think I'll just end the video there. So if you like this project, then go have a look at the project on GitHub. There'll be some links to that down below for the main project and also the Flash Dex project. So if you want to add to the pre-made decks that are already there, so add a single pre-made deck, go check out Flash Decks and submit a pull request for that. And if you want to just help make the application better, go check out the main project. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video, but before I go, I just want to thank my patrons. A special thank you to Nathan Andrew Road, Oku, Larry Ray, and Zilva, who help make this channel possible. Without the support, I wouldn't be doing this as well today. So if you want to support the channel, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below, as well as some other links down there, like my Amazon affiliate links, as well as some other stuff as well. So be sure to check all of that out. I've also got my social links down below, and my alternate video platforms. Also remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.